daughter, Dot Christensen. I'm an architect and uh, uh, director of this office, Atelier Pro. We're in The Hague. We've been here as an office for more than 40 years, and it's our lovely garden. Sustainability has always been a part of our office. It's deeply rooted in our uh, DNA. It's Circularity is something that slowly started growing. And it started growing, and it's like a snowball that eventually becomes so big, you can't get around it. <laughs> you need to face it. We have so far to go. There are some projects, some architects in Holland worldwide who achieved to make these beautiful bio-based, completely neutral, uh, circular uh, projects, but they are, they, are, they are the stars, they are a few, they are the 5%. But the 95%, the, the, the average also needs to move and needs to have ambition and needs to try as much as possible because every little step is, is better. One of our nice examples of the small steps for towards circularity and, a, and towards um, um, a healthier way of building is um, a project we did for an office building. It's a refurbishment of an office building that we built in the 90s, which at that point was extremely uh, sustainable and got, uh, got loads of, of prizes for it. But the stars were in a good constellation for this project because we had a client who thought this building has quality, but we need to enlarge the area of the building and we need to make it Paris proof and we need to make it more sustainable. This building is being refurbished because it has quality. And sometimes you refurbish buildings by tearing down the facades and only using the concrete structure. But this one, the, the building itself, though it was a mid 90s building with a, 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 a typical collage architecture, it still had some sort of quality of architecture that could, could last for longer than a decade or two decades. So it was worthwhile keeping the architecture as well. So we kept the elevations and simply bettered the elevations. And we heightened the building and we, reused a lot of the old window frames and, and stuff like from the interior. And of course, it's challenging because when you do this, you have to be aware that you're obliged to uh, kill your darlings. I think you have to tell yourself, come on, grow up and, 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 and force yourself to really look at it and, be, and be, have the courage to say, this is not good enough. Not all architects are, have that courage. I'm grateful for our client that they asked us because normally our office is an old office. So we do have some of our old buildings which are being refurbished or redone by other architects. And it's very nice to be asked yourself to redo your own building because it, it, it gives you the opportunity to send this building off to the next 50 years with a proper goodbye. But it's, it's always about a combination of your vision as an architect and what the the vision of the clients and how you influence each other and how you uh, get this symbiotic thing. And of course it's about money, but it's mostly it's about the wish and the will, will and ambition and inspiration. And that is something that you as an architect can give. And you have to give it an abundance because otherwise nothing is going to change. I think this transition in sustainability and in circularity is is a worldwide thing happening. And I think the awareness is worldwide that it is it is something that we have to do. 
it's not a question, it's a, it's a must. And, and that's the first thing. The second thing is that then you build your ambition and your knowledge around this necessity. If everybody pushes and moves, we get step for step for step, we get there. And that's why I think it's extremely important that we realize it's not only about the STAR project, it's about every project. Of course, we still have to make the best possible, nicest architecture, but, but, but it's not the big A, it's the big picture. It's, the, it's um, leaving a better world.